to the core, entire FBI going down after Trump found their mole. It all makes sense now by Kara Curry for RWNofficial.com. It has been a couple of weeks of revelations as an intense battle of wills broke out between House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunez, the Department of Justice, and the Mueller investigation concerning a cache of intelligence that Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein refused to, uh, refuses to hand over in response to a subpoena, a request Rosenstein equated to nothing less than extortion. Information deemed so incredibly top secret that the DOJ refused to show Nunez on the grounds that it could risk lives by potentially exposing the source, a U.S. citizen who has provided intelligence to the CIA and FBI. The agency finally relented on Wednesday, allowing Nunez and Representative Trey Gowdy to receive a classified briefing. Then came the bombshell revelation via a disturbing op-ed in the Wall Street Journal by Kimberly, Kimberly Strassel, alleging the FBI had infiltrated the Trump campaign with a mole, a spy that Strassel believes she knows the identity of, but will not publish at this time, she notes. I believe I know the name of the informant, but my intelligence sources did not provide it to me and refused to confirm it. It would therefore be irresponsible to publish it. So it is apparently time to play whack-a-mole with the big leagues in Washington, so let's go on a mole hunt. The Last Refuge notes in February that the Trump campaign advisor Carter Page was working as an undercover uh, employee, UCE, for the FBI helping the agency build a case against Evgeny Buryakov. There it goes, where Carter Page was a plant. Then, seven months later, the FBI told a FISA court Page was a spy. The uh, last refuge notes in April of 2017, writing a story about Carter Page trying to enhance slash affirm the Russian narrative. The New York Times outlined Page connections to the Trump campaign. However, New York Times also references Page's prior connection to the Buryakov case. If you ignore the narrative, you discover the UCE1 description is Carter Page. Owens Jack Posobiec took to Twitter to ask Page directly if the mole was him rather than simply speculate. Page in return replied, denying the charge, stating, but if what I'm hearing alleged is correct. It's a guy I know who splits uh, most his time between inside the Beltway and in one of the other Five Eyes countries, adding, and if so, it's, it'd be typical swamp creatures putting themselves first. Carter Page, PhD here, no, Jack Posobiec, not me. But if uh, what I'm hearing alleged is correct, it's a guy I know who splits most his time between inside the Beltway and in one of the other Five Eye countries. And if so, it'd be typical swamp creatures putting themselves first. Well, so Carter Page calls them out. Very interesting. Uh, I always thought he was a plant. Let's see what happens. We don't know. Another person of significant interest is Steve, uh, St Stefan Halper. Halper is a foreign policy expert and Cambridge professor with connections to both the CIA and its British counterparts, MI6. Remember, MI6 is where Christopher Steele of the now infamous dossier had connections to as well. In February of 2016, Halper set up a meeting between Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos and former Australian High Commissioner Alexander Downer. Downer is, no, is a known Clinton crony and is tipped to uh, Australian authorities that Papadopoulos knew of ha uh, hacked emails which could potentially cause harm to Hillary Clinton was considered a major factor in the FBI's decision to launch its counterintelligence operations against the Trump campaign. According to the Daily Caller, Halper also had several other contacts with Trump campaign officials as well, 
noting Halper's September 2016 outreach to Papadopoulos wasn't his only contact with Trump campaign members. The 73-year-old professor, a veteran of three uh, Republican administrations, met with two other campaign advisors. Also of note, the New York Post Paul Speary points out that Stefan Halper's Wikipedia page had been updated to include he has been exposed as a CIA and MI6 spy behind the FBI Russiagate investigations of the Trump campaign and is an informant to the Mueller special prosecutor investigation, an addition which was quickly deleted. Interesting, uh, Paul Speary's tweet here, interesting recent addition to Stefan A. Halper's Wikipedia page. He has been exposed as a CIA and MI6 spy behind the FBI Russiagate investigations of the Trump campaign and is an informant to the Mueller special prosecutor investigation. He has been exposed. Okay, uh, good MAGA here, good catch. It's already been removed. Here are the screenshots. They removed that from Wikipedia immediately. Zero Hedge notes that perhaps Page and Halper are connected through London-based High Hackliet and Company, founded by three former British intelligence operatives in 1995 to provide the kind of otherwise inaccessible research for which select governments and Fortune 500 uh, operations or corporations uh, pay huge sums. Interestingly, Alexander Downer has been on their advisory board for a decade, while Halper is connected to Hackliet through Jonathan Clark, with whom he has co-authored two books. You can find a June 2004 video of the pair discussing their book here. Jonathan Clark is the U.S. Representative, Director of U.S. Operations for Hackliet. Uh, Clark is a fairly public figure, but it was quite difficult to locate references to his association with Hackliet. Given the lengthy association between Halper and Clark, I expect we will find additional ties between Halper, other members of Hackliet, and members of British intelligence. Halper's association with former MI6 head Richard Dearlove via their previous positions at Cambridge Intelligence Seminar is already known. Uh, ThemeMarketsWork.com. Jack Prasobic. At this point, it seems the most likely person the FBI source is would be St uh, Stefan Halper. Uh, they used him to validate Steele and Downer. Uh, I bet you $1,000 it's in the Carter Page FISA warrant application. It seems like the rabbit hole is indeed a deep one. Pasobic assessments on the FBI's mold and hackley it, and indeed on Halper's potential uh, involvement is in uh, short, Page got played. Could be. Page got played. The Wall Street Journal again dares to publish an op-ed, this time from 33-year-old veteran of the FBI, who, upon his reflection of his own tenure at the Bureau and considering the debacle above, proclaims his shock at the other and utter and complete disrespect being shown to Congress currently, as Tom Baker notes. It is truly uh, a change in culture. Uh, Baker states, Last week we learned that some Republican members of Congress are considering articles of impeachment against Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein if he doesn't hand over certain Federal Bureau of Investigation documents. In January, House Speaker Paul Ryan had to threaten the Deputy Attorney General and FBI Director Christopher Wray with contempt to get them to comply with a House subpoena for documents about the Steele dossier. I spent 33 years in the FBI, including several working in the Office of Congressional and Public Affairs. The recent deterioration in the Bureau's relationship with Congress is shocking. It truly is a change in culture. Former Director William Webster, 1978 to 87, and Louis Freach, 1993 to 2001, insisted that the FBI respond promptly to any congressional request. In those days, a congressional committee didn't need a subpoena to get information from the FBI. 
Yes, we were particularly responsive to the Appropriations Committee, which are key to the Bureau's funding. But my colleagues and I shared a general sense that resp uh, responding to congressional requests was the right thing to do. That was then, this is now, right? The Bureau's leaders often reminded us of Congress's legitimate oversight role. This was particularly true of the so-called Gang of Eight, which was created by statute to ensure the existence of a secure vehicle through which congressional leaders could be briefed on the most sensitive, sensitive counterintelligence or terrorism investigations. On August 27th, the House uh, Intelligence Committee uh, Chairman Devin Nunez uh, asked the FBI to deliver certain documents immediately. The bulk of the documents weren't actually delivered until January 11th. I can't imagine uh, Mr. Webster or Mr. Freach tolerating such a delay. One of the documents Mr. Nunez requested is the electronic communications believed to be, have uh, initiated the counterintelligence investigation of Donald Trump in July of 2016. The FBI had previously provided a redacted text of that communication, but the Intelligence Committee wanted to see more. On March 23rd, the Bureau essentially told the committee it wouldn't lift the re redactions. There are legitimate reasons why the FBI would want certain portions of a sensitive document redacted, such as when information comes from a foreign partner. But there are ways around such difficulties. Select members of Congress have in the past been allowed to read highly sensitive documents under specific restrictions. Former FBI Director James Comey didn't even inform the Gang of Eight that the Bureau had opened a counterintelligence investigation into the campaign of a major party candidate for president. He testified on March 20th, 2017, that he had kept Congress in the dark about the Trump investigation because he'd been advised to do so by his assistant director of counterintelligence due to the sensitivity of the matter. The Gang of Eight exists for precisely this purpose. Not using it is inexplicable. This isn't the way a law enforcement agency should behave under our system of separation of powers. Attorney General Jeff Sessions must push Mr. Ray to get the FBI's relationship with Congress back on track. Won't be easy, but the American people deserve it and the Constitution demands it. So all this crap because Jeff Sessions didn't uh, recuse himself from the get-go. How much money did we lose uh, and, and all this that's taking place? It started with Hillary Clinton and Obama, and yet Jeff Sessions stepped aside and uh, allowed all this, and now we're digging for dirt on these people that's taking forever, and Jeff Sessions is, uh, you know, stonewalling everybody in the meantime. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and again, thank you so much for watching.